Hey, what's up, Mavs fans? Kevin Gray, Mavericks pre- and post-game host on 97.1 The Freak on the Dallas Mavericks Radio Network. Appreciate you joining me for another episode of Inside the Mavs here on Kevin Gray Sports on YouTube. You can find me on Twitter at Kevin Gray Sports. Be sure to download and subscribe to Inside the Mavs wherever you get podcasts for free. The official Mavericks podcast of 97.1 The Freak on iHeartRadio, Apple Podcasts, and Spotify, wherever you get your podcasts for free. Make sure you give the podcast a five-star rating and write a review for it while you're there. You can find me on Twitter at Kevin Gray Sports. And if you like this video, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe to Kevin Gray Sports here on YouTube. Mavericks get the 115-108 win over the Minnesota Timberwolves to move to 22-15 and on the season and now 11-7 and at home as they begin their season-long seven-game homestand with three consecutive wins after blowing the doors off the Portland Trailblazers in the first two games by a combined 65 points. They use a 15-2 run to close the fourth quarter to beat Minnesota by seven, where Kyrie Irving was spectacular down the stretch, hitting the game-tying and go-ahead three-pointers late in the fourth quarter to help the Mavericks be able to to overcome what was a terrific run by the Minnesota Timberwolves to start the fourth quarter, where they opened up the quarter with a 19-4 run of their own after being down by nine, entering into the fourth quarter to eventually take a six-point lead at 106-100. to But you saw Dwight Powell be able to get a three-point play to get him within three, and then Kyrie Irving hitting back-to-back three-pointers to give the Mavs the lead. Derrick Jones Jr. had a nice dunk on a Dwight Powell screen to be able to finish things off as the Mavericks held the Timberwolves in that fourth quarter down the stretch over a three-minute span without a basket. The Mavericks, during that 15-2 run, at one point scored 11 straight as they able to get the seven-point win. Now, for the Mavericks, four games above 500, and for them moving to 12-5 and five in clutch games this season. Speaking of clutch... That's what Kyrie Irving was down the stretch for the Mavericks. Luka Doncic only had four points in the fourth quarter, and you could tell that that right ankle, which he's been dealing with swelling in, was bothering him late in that fourth quarter. But Kyrie Irving said, don't you worry about it, Luka. I got you. I'm going to take over this game and be able to bring us home against the Minnesota Timberwolves, and they needed every bit of what Kyrie Irving brought in that game against Minnesota. And here's what I loved about it. Kyrie had 35 points, yes, was huge with his shot making down the stretch. But he also had eight rebounds and five assists. Coming into the game against Minnesota, he had nine rebounds in each of his last three games, giving him 27. And then he gets another eight rebounds in this game. So that means my man has 35 rebounds over his last four games. And he's doing all the old man veteran type of stuff, getting into passing lanes, causing havoc with deflections, diving on the floor for loose balls, diving into the Minnesota Timberwolves bench, trying to save the ball. He's doing all the things that a guy who's trying to be leader guy and veteran guy on this team is supposed to do. And you give Kyrie Irving a lot of credit for being able to put himself in that position to be able to understand that he has to lead by example for this team, not just when it needs him to be able to be the scorer or alongside Luka Doncic, but also to set the example for what it means to play hard on both ends of the floor, even when this team has struggled at times defensively. And since Kyrie Irving has come back from his right heel contusion, you have seen a player that is concerned with doing everything that he can to help Luka Doncic carry the load for this team. These two combined for 69 points in the game, hitting 11 of the 15 three-pointers that the Mavericks hit against the Timberwolves. And I love the fact that Luka Doncic, while, yes, we know how terrific of an offensive player that he is, he decided at times to take on the challenge of guarding Carl Anthony Towns in the block in the post, which is something that I never thought I would say about Luka Doncic as a defender, but yet here we are. He is taking on the challenge of dealing with Carl Anthony Towns, and he did so pretty successfully, I might add. Luka Doncic is joking after the game. They look, man, I got some of the biggest legs in the league, and I'm strong. I can handle it. And he certainly acquitted himself well against Carl Anthony Towns in those situations. But for the Mavericks now, they move forward here. Three consecutive wins, two wins over the Blazers, 
now beating the Minnesota Timberwolves and what I, I needed to see from this team and what a lot of Mavericks team fans needed to see from this team was a signature win. We know that the Mavericks have been beating up on bad teams. In fact, coming into the game, the Mavericks were 14-3 and versus sub-500 teams, but they had not gotten a win over a really good opponent based off of what we think this team can be, and they were able to get that. Now, with that seven-point win, there's a little more confidence, I'm sure, for MFFLs and Mavs fans about what they can do, especially when this team is fully healthy moving forward. Again, no Dante Exxon with his contusion. No Derek Lively the second, who's dealing with his left ankle sprain. But when Kyrie Irving and Luka Doncic are on the floor together, you have a chance to win every single night, and that's what they were able to do, especially Kyrie Irving down the stretch. Knocking down timely three-pointers, making plays, and ensuring that he was going to will this team to a win. And you saw early on in the game where Carl, or excuse me, with Anthony Edwards was really putting on a show, especially in the first quarter. The quickness at which he got to the basket with putting Josh Green in a blender at times with a beautiful Euro step. Anthony Edwards is a certified baller, and you saw that throughout the course of the first half. For some reason, down the stretch, the Minnesota Timberwolves got away from him. The Mavericks were also able to get themselves together when it came to Rudy Gobert in the second half, who didn't score a single point in the second half of the game. So there were a lot of good things that you've seen from this Mavericks team over the last few weeks, a team that's committed themselves to getting into passing lanes, stealing the basketball, but more importantly, committing to getting stops when they need to. You say, Kevin, some of that has been padded by some of the teams that they've played, but most importantly, and here's where I want you to stick with me on this, this is about building habits, building championship-type habits, especially on defense. We are not going to have any questions about what this team does offensively every single night with Luka Doncic and Kyrie Irving and guys like Derrick Jones Jr., who deserves a big special shout-out with the double-double that he had with 12 points and 10 rebounds, doing, again, the things required, especially when you're shorthanded in the front court without Derek Lively to be able to help rebound and do things that needed to be done to win this game. But back to the defense. They are building the kind of habits that can translate no matter which team you play. And that's important. As long as this team remains committed to what they are supposed to do on the defensive end, because, again, we've talked about it throughout the course of this season so far. Find me a way, Dallas, to get to average defense in this league this year, and you're going to have a chance to win a lot of basketball games. And that's what you're seeing now over the last several games. A team that is willing to guard on the defensive end, but also know that they cannot be stopped when they're knocking down shots on the offensive end. And in this game, look, they only have four guys in double figures with Derrick Jones Jr., Luka Kyrie, and Tim Hardaway Jr., who also had 12 points in this game, knocking down four shots. But the Mavericks were able to use a formula of collectively team rebounding. Yes, I know they got out-rebounded by seven, more so of what it had to do with in the first quarter with the Minnesota Timberwolves, especially in the offensive glass, dominating from there. But from there, it was pretty much even with the collection that's willing to team rebound. In this game, you shot over 45% from the field. And yes, you shot 38% from three. But it was the timing of these shots that the Mavericks were able to utilize. They had a nine-point lead going into the fourth quarter. They were able to hit their last five baskets of the third quarter to get that nine-point lead as they closed the quarter on an 8-0 run. Luka Doncic was absolutely fantastic closing that third quarter with knocking down shots himself. And then Kyrie was able to take over. And when you have that blend of two superstars who know any shot anytime they want to and they can take turns making music offensively together, you don't get concerned about what this team can do. Ball games, when you've got Kyrie being able to take over and be the maestro on the offensive end as well. So for the Mavericks, this was a huge win for them as they get ready to welcome in John Morant and the Memphis Grizzlies on Tuesday before taking on Jalen Brunson and the New York Knicks, then welcoming in the Pelicans for the final two games of their seven-game homestand. John Morant did not play in the game on Sunday against the Phoenix Suns, and Memphis was still able to find a way to win, so I'm sure that he will be ready to go 
against Dallas on Tuesday. And for Luka Doncic, how much more will he deal with this right ankle swelling? We already know that he's dealing with a quad injury as well, and he's playing through a lot of pain. This is why Kyrie Irving continues to have to shoulder the load, especially offensively, as much as he can to provide balance on this team offensively. And if he can, that will be really, really helpful for Luka Doncic right now, who is trying to do the best that he can and doing so rather effectively to continue to play through the amount of injuries that he's dealing with. And for the Mavericks, getting that contribution from not just the downs, my man shots, including what was a monster block off the weak side on Rudy Gobert. He was doing a little bit of everything, and I think that was the theme of the game between the Mavericks and the Timberwolves. Everyone doing a little bit of everything. Even Grant Williams in this game was 3 of 5. He had 9 points as he was able to have some effect on this team as well, knocking down a couple of timely shots in the game. This was a collective team effort, and the Mavericks are going to have to win that way, especially as they recover with the injuries that they're dealing with. Each and every night, someone's going to have to step up and do something a little bit different to be able to help this team while depending on Luka and Kyrie to be the guys offensively that be the proverbial straws that stir the drink for them on the offensive end. And that could be a formula for this team to win. Timely stops on the defensive end, terrific scoring output from Luka Dodgers and Kyrie Irving, while a supporting cast such as Derrick Jones Jr., Tim Hardaway Jr., Josh Green, others are able to supplement what these two are able to do on a night-to-night -night basis. And then when you get Derek Lively back, then you're able to incorporate some of the rebounding and the rim running and shot protection that Derek Lively presents. And hopefully he'll be able to stay in the lineup for a consistent period of time. You give the Mavericks credit for taking advantage of the poor shooting at the free throw line by the Minnesota Timberwolves in this game. And that was literally the difference in the game. The Mavericks got a seven-point win in this game as the Minnesota Timberwolves went 13 of 21 from the free throw line. I don't know if you know how to do math, boys and girls, but that was eight missed free throws. The difference in the game was seven. Again, the little things matter in a game where you see two teams that were extremely close, and you saw that in the third quarter. Both of these teams started off the third quarter 8 of 18 from the field. Both teams had 11 rebounds through the first eight minutes of that third quarter. It was 2019 through the first eight minutes of the period, a very even third quarter. But the difference was the Mavericks making shots down the stretch of that third quarter, thanks to Luka Doncic, and then using that 8-0 run to give themselves that nine-point lead to be able to go into the fourth quarter. And then you saw the Timberwolves in what was a game of runs, especially in the second half, make a run of their own, but the Mavericks didn't panic. And that's a, another underrated factor of having Luka Doncic and Kyrie Irving. There's not going to be any panic with those two, especially for a Kyrie Irving who has hit some of the biggest shots in the history of the NBA. Hello, Golden State. So if you've got two guys who are not going to panic, even when things are going awry, even when calls may not be going Luka Doncic's way, he's, he was doing a little bit of barking, in this game against Minnesota, those two will be a calm, steadying force for this team, and Irving was that, especially in the last three minutes of the game. And that's what, if you're a Mavericks fan, you love. Luka is going to do Luka. He's going to do special things, get to the rim, be that three-level scorer, knock down threes. But Kyrie Irving, on some nights, is going to have to be the guy that calms everyone down, lets everyone know that it's going to be okay, make the plays that may not necessarily be seen in the box score, but then make some of the biggest plays that you and I will be talking about when we watch Sports Center, if we do that sort of thing these days, and be able to understand what Kyrie Irving is to this team. And you saw the value that he brought to the Mavericks against Minnesota. That is huge. And going forward, when you're taking on the Memphis Grizzlies on Tuesday, the New York Knicks a little bit later on in this week, and then the final two games of your home stand against the New Orleans Pelicans as you could jockey for position in the Western Conference. These are the games that we'll be reminded of about why it's so important to have a former NBA champion on your roster who knows how to knock down shots when they matter most. And oh, by the way, 
have a young guy next to him who can do the same, who's taken a team to the Western Conference Finals already before his 25th birthday. These are the things. These are the moments. All of this put together should give Mavericks fans a lot of confidence about what they see going forward. And that's going to be something that you and I continue to watch. How much more will this team continue to grow? The depth of this team has continued to be tested so far through the course of this year. J.C. Kidd talked about it after the game against Minnesota. Guys who have had to play because of the injuries are getting valuable experience that will hopefully make things easier for them as they go down the stretch of this season when things will continue to get tight and the competition continues to get stiffer. Because you're going to need a Jaden Hardy. You're going to have to need a, a Josh Green. You're going to have to need all of these guys, a Derrick Jones Jr., and hopefully when Dante Exum comes back healthy, you're going to need all of these guys to be contributors to this team. And you saw one of the more complete team effort wins and when they did not panic when they could have. Because watching Minnesota go on that 19-4 run to take that six-point lead in the fourth quarter, I'm sitting there in the studio watching the game thinking, number one, Mavericks went cold, can't knock down any shots. Luca's ankle's out here bothering him. But more importantly, how do the Mavericks now respond to what the Timberwolves were able to do to begin that fourth quarter? And they responded beautifully, led by their veteran in Kyrie Irving. And that's going to be huge down the stretch. His calming, steadying presence and being able to understand what this moment is for him at this point in his career versus what he was several years ago, he is now going to be looked to as the guy that will be sought for for advice, a guy that will have to lead by example on the floor while still being an incredible shot maker based on what he is capable of doing. So the Mavericks now sit four games above 500 at 11 and seven, a three-game winning streak now at the American Airlines Center and overall building momentum while they continue to get themselves healthy. And we know that an 82-game season in the NBA is a war of attrition. You're going to go through your ups and downs. Minnesota right now, having gone 5-5 five and five in their last 10 games, dealing with some of that right now, the ups and downs of a long NBA season. But right now, the Mavericks are doing what they're supposed to do at home. Take advantage of the opportunities to be in your own building for a couple of weeks after what's been the topsy-turvy schedule that they've dealt with, with all the road home, home road, back-to-backs, alternating home and road games for the first eight games of the season and the kind of travel that they've been dealing with. They have now been able to put themselves in position to really build on something at home and they've done so through the first three games of this homestand. And that's all you can ask for. Take care of business against bad teams, protect home court, and find a way to get yourself a signature win against the best team in the Western Conference. And now, knowing that you can beat the best team record-wise in the West, when things got tough, when you got down, and you responded in kind with the kind of clutch shot-making Kyrie Irving that you need it in order to help this team win a ball game. And a win like this, all of this to be said, a win like this goes a long way for these young guys about knowing how to respond to pressure when things get tight. Being outscored by 15 to lose a nine-point lead that you had at the beginning of the fourth quarter to be down by six and still find a way to come back, I like to call that resilience. And the Mavericks showed plenty of that in this game. Despite being out-rebounded, despite watching Anthony Edwards go off for 36 points, despite all the things that were against them, the Mavericks were able to make it happen and get stops when they needed to. They had seven steals in this game. They doubled up the Minnesota Timberwolves on blocks, which I didn't think I would say coming after a Minnesota game where the Mavericks had eight blocks to the Timberwolves four in the game. That just speaks to the amount of communication and effort that the Mavericks put forward on the defensive end, and it came to fruition in a big way against a team with the best record in the Western Conference. So the Mavericks now are able to hopefully get their fourth straight win when they take on John Morant and the Memphis Grizzlies. If you know anything about John Morant, you know that he's going to be ready to put on a show Hopefully, Luka Doncic will be able to respond in kind. And the status of Derek Lively II will continue to be monitored. That, along with Dante Exum, 
whom we was out in the game against Minnesota. We will see if Derek Lively can get closer to being upgraded for a possible return sooner than later. They're going to need him moving forward. While, yes, they were able to stem the tie without him against the Minnesota Timberwolves. You saw in that first quarter how much he has desperately missed for this team. But you look at it from an X's and O's standpoint, however you want to break it down, the most important thing for this team in this game was effort. They didn't quit. They didn't panic. They didn't give up when things went awry. And that is a characteristic of any good team that you can take with you. How do you respond when things are going wrong for you and then ensuring that you find a way to win? That, for me, was the theme going into this game against Minnesota. Find a way to win. And they did. And you give Kyrie Irving a lot of credit for being that guy to lead that charge. Now the Mavericks look to make it four in a row when they take on Memphis and continue to build on this. Build on this as much as you can if you're the Mavericks because your season-long seven-game homestand is a proving ground to show the rest of the league and that is something that if you're a Maverick fan, you could take to the rest of your NBA buddies and fans around the league. Say, look, we got a signature win against the best defensive team in the NBA with the defense that we used on our own in the fourth quarter to shut them down and offensively getting terrific shot making from Kyrie Irving to get it done. You could take that with you if you're the Mavericks. Mavericks take on the Memphis Grizzlies on third on Tuesday before welcoming in Jalen Brunson and the New York Knicks on Thursday. I'll have your pregame show before the Mavs, 30 minutes before the Mavs take on the Memphis Grizzlies on Tuesday night. You can find me on Twitter at Kevin Gray Sports. Again, be sure to download and subscribe to Inside the Mavs wherever you get your podcast for free. Give it a five-star rating and write a review for it. While you're there, don't forget, you can also subscribe to my channel here at Kevin Gray Sports. You can check out my personal podcast, The Gray Area Podcast, wherever you get podcasts for free, new episodes every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. You can also follow Grant on Twitter, at Grant Avseth, and the same for his YouTube channel as well. As we are just a month away from the NBA trade deadline, we'll have a lot of conversation over the next several days about what moves the Mavericks could possibly make to try and fortify this roster. So a lot of good stuff coming here over the next several days as the Mavericks continue to move forward now having won three straight games. Again, my name is Kevin Gray, Mavericks pre- and post-game host on 97.1 The Freak on the Dallas Mavericks Radio Network. This has been Inside the Mavs, the official Mavericks podcast of 97.1 The Freak. I'll talk to you later. Peace.